dude, this looks so good. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, that was a cool, that was a cool bite. Oh my God, that one came out of the water for it. We decided to come out fishing here on one of my home lakes um, and we're in a high water year. So um, getting back into some of these backwaters is possible with the high water. And I made it back to one of my favorite backwaters here and there's just beautiful milfoil and grass and all of it's in, you know, four, four feet or less. And it's a perfect time to throw a frog. We just got in here and I already had a couple blow ups here and I'm switching between a white frog and just a, in a, in a bluegill color frog. I'm really just trying to see which color they like better. I'm seeing dragonflies and things like that. So immediately I'm in here looking for clues, seeing if there's any frogs on the bank, but we should be able to catch a few in here. Okay, so hands down, the most important aspect to frog fishing um, is being accurate, hands down. Um, know how to cast a rod and reel, you know, go out in your front yard if you have to and practice casting. Learn how to put a frog in a, you know, a basketball size hole. Um, you gotta think, frog fishing is all about being stealthy, presenting that frog to a, a larger than normal fish in a natural manner. So whether you're trying to imitate some of these dragonflies that are cruising along these mats and, and grass flats, or a frog, or a bird, or a turtle, anything on the surface there, you wanna make it feel and look and seem right. Again, we're targeting five plus pound fish on a frog, and those are old fish. They're just like those big swim bait fish we catch. They're very smart. So learn how to be stealthy. Learn how to make those perfect presentations. Know your targets, know those little holes, and make those nice, perfect casts. And again, we're fishing two and a half to three feet of water, you know, less than four feet of water. So a shallow bass in that real shallow water, it knows its surroundings. If you get that frog, it's your job to put that frog, you know, within a four to five foot radius of where that big bass is laying, um, it knows its surroundings. So you don't have to be, you know, real choppy and real loud with the retrieve, just a nice subtle retrieve, make it look as real as possible. You know, frogs don't go crazy on the surface. Um, you know, it's just real subtle. The bass underneath really knows its environment. So um, again, the biggest thing is being accurate, being quiet on the trolling motor and making that real nice subtle presentation. That's how you catch the biggest bass on a frog. Oh my God. The thing about a frog is it's, it's absolutely weedless. So, you know, whether you're, you're new to bass fishing, um, or, you know, you've been around for a while, you know how to throw a spinnerbait, know how to throw a jig, and you kind of want to expand your, your arsenal. The frog is an awesome tool to use from March all the way through the rest of the year. Um, you know, it re start, really starts working well in kind of pre-spawn when the bass start moving real shallow. You can throw it right up on the bank, walk it out, pause it, catch some pre-spawn fish that way. All through the spawn, the hated around beds, and then post-spawn is really when it starts picking up. So in your late Aprils, Mays, June, July, all through the summertime when that grass really starts growing, it's a really good uh, weedless tool to th literally throw right on the bank. You can work it through trees, you can work it through you know, wood, grass, whatever it is. You're not gonna get hung up, just make sure you throw it on a pretty stout rod. Um, you know, you could start out with your jig rod, a heavy jig rod, um, something in between a jig rod and a, and a flipping rod. So um, I'm throwing a, a, a Rochi Double X Perfect Pitch. This is a seven foot two. Um, I throw small swim baits on this rod. But really the sweet spot for frog fishing in my opinion seven foot two seven foot three seven foot four you can make long casts with that braided line and the best thing about braid and a frog is it doesn't matter if you got six feet of line out or 60 feet of line out there's zero stretch so whatever hook set you get initially is the hook set you're going to get and um and one just ate it right there oh my gosh <laughs> ate it again Oh God, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. And that's what I'm talking about. That 60 foot cast. I made a real long cast. I was talking mid sentence there and I was just slowly dragging across the mat real slowly. And that fish bit it three different times. And I got that good hook set. 
It's not a huge one, but that's a fun fish. So little bluegill pattern in the mill foil. That's awesome. I know frog fishing, I mean, it could be some of the, you could get some of the most exciting and like hard stopping bites, but you kind of, you got to be prepared for it. So like, as I'm kind of working my frog through here, I'm just kind of chopping it along the grass here. My rod tip is pointed, you know, kind of in that one, 130 position. Um, that way when I make the cast on top of those mats and when one eats it and takes it down, I've got all this, you know, from point A to point B, all the way in the back here. So you never want to be out of position when a big giant fish eats a frog off the surface. Um, you never want to have your rod up here or way back here because when one takes it, and you've only got about three feet of, of hook setting, you know, space, it, you just won't get a good hook penetration. So my rod tip will always be down that one o'clock, two o'clock position. So when one eats it, I'll, I'll hesitate you know, a second, second and a half, let it take it and then wind up and absolutely give them the wood, give them the business. And um, you either have them or you don't. Off the initial hook set, I mean, if you get good hook penetration and you hook that fish, you have that fish no matter what. It could go all the way through this grass mat, but that initial hook set is absolutely key. And right now I'm just kind of, I'm playing with the retrieve a little bit here. I'm just giving it some really nice chops and the thing I like about this frog um, is it's got that cup face to it and a longer than normal body. So every little chop I make, it just cuts real hard. Bam, 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 cuts and spits right on top of this sparse milfoil. And that's how you trigger a lot of big bites because it just looks like a bluegill on the surface. It's kind of spraying water everywhere and it drives those big fish nuts. So I like that cup face, little longer body, and you can walk it. So what I'll do is I'll just cast maybe three or four feet into the mat it's real thick in there, and I'm just kind of looking for little holes and stuff like that, but I'll cast right on top of the mat and just short chops out, maybe give it a pause, nice short chops all the way out and let the cup do all the spraying. And then when I bring it to the edge of that, edge of the mat, edge of the, the grass there, I'll give it that nice kind of walk the dog action. And that's, again, if you have one following it under the mat, walking the dog out, it just it's, it's just like a, a walking style bait. Um, it triggers a lot of big fish into biting. So I've got this bluegill pattern one on here, but I'm noticing a lot of red dragonflies. And I know, you know, the thing about frog fishing too is like, I think they eat off the, the bigger ones eat off the surface because ever since they were a little fry, these bass, uh, they've been eating bugs and things off the surface. So I think often overlooked um, is the food source of a dragonfly. So I'm seeing a lot of red dragonflies. I see some blue ones, some smoke looking ones. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to go from a, a bluegill color frog. I'm just going to come down here and go on my frog box and go with either like a, like a red color or like a gnarly red like that or something like this looks real dragonfly right here. Um, that's MB Gizzard. That kind of looks like the, the bluish green ones floating around. But I'm gonna switch up colors and see if that makes a difference on us. I mean, this one right here, this, this matte shad looks kind of like a, a dragonfly too. And you know, with that, it's, you know, it's called a frog, but in my opinion, it really imitates a dragonfly, a bird, a baby duck, a baby goose, whatever it is, just something natural on the surface that creates a lot of disturbance that drives big bass nuts. Um, going back to the colors here, I mean, this is a, an OG white one here, and it's got a bunch of teeth marks on it. You talk to some of the, the more hardcore frog throwers, and you ask them what color to throw, most of them are gonna say either throw white or black and let the, you know, the clouds, the sun, um, and the water color kind of dictate whether you go dark or whether you go light. I like to mix in a bluegill flavor um, or even like a shad color as well. So, um, you know, this is more of a natural color for the clear waters, but um, I do agree with the either, either the white or either the black. 
Um, let the fish tell you which one. I will say this, a solid white frog is easier to see as you make those long casts and you get it walking back and forth. It is a lot easier to see. It's almost like a golf ball driven down a fairway. Um, so that helps too. That way you know your frog is working properly. Um, if they don't prefer the white one, try a black one. If you see a lot of bluegill in the area, throw a bluegill pattern, a perch pattern. Um, and then if you're around a shad spawn, you know, go with those more natural shad colors. Dude, the dragonfly! Ugh. Look at all these red dragonflies, dude. Look at them. First cast. <laughs> Johnny was just picking up the camera. <laughs> First cast with it, and it blew up. Oh. <sighs> Is he still on there? We literally just tied that red frog on, and I've casted it right there in that opening. Come on, be on there. Come here, come here, Michi. What do we got? What do we got? Little dragonfly eater. That was cool. First cast going to a red frog, noticing the red dragonflies. That's awesome, dude. It ate it like it was a five pounder. Kind of let the fish tell you, you know, how long they want the paws and, and everything. But um, as far as covering water goes and just moving along, chop, 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 pause. You want to pause on all the little points of the grass, the points in the coves. You look for holes. If it's too choked out and too matted, don't spend a lot of time there. You want to spend the time. It's just like when we're punching, spend a lot of time in those holes, those voids, those openings. That's where the bluegill live. That's where the bass know the bluegill live. And that's where the bass crash on those bluegills. So look for those voids, those openings. The best scenario is like a, a, a grass point that's broken up. There's holes in it with a canopy over the top. Four feet of water or less, that's where you wanna throw a frog. That's, that's where you catch your biggest fish. So weed point, voids, bluegill, big bass. Oh yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. Dude, I'm telling you, they think it's a dragonfly. Oh, that was a good bite. That was cool. That was really cool. Yeah, good girl. Smoked it. That was amazing. They're relating to the holes. They could actually notice and see that red color. That was really cool. Man, this frog fishing is so much fun. I swapped over to that red one and uh, immediately just so. You know, hopefully watching this video, you picked up a few more tips on on, uh, on frog fishing in general. Biggest thing is just don't overthink it. Throw it out there. Really pay attention to what the environment's doing. In this case, it was the red dragonflies on the mats, but pay attention to the frogs, pay attention to the bluegill, the shad, whatever it might be. Kind of match those conditions with your, your frog selection and colors. Um, just have fun with it, man. Just watching those big ones, there's, there's nothing better seeing a big giant bass suck something off the surface. <laughs>